It is a certainty. Yep. So we look this morning that there are certainties in the middle of uncertainty. I was shocked this week as I went to the Glen and my wife and I, we walk our little dog there so often. I look and everything is rerouted. It's rerouted. I've seen banks move that, that, that were once there, Sister Jan. i see water flowing where we walked on dry ground. I've seen just the whole, uh, the whole uh, elements of things changed around. I've seen pavement picked up and, and just like it was picked up and moved to, to a different place in great big sheets. It, it, it was mind-boggling to me. I looked at pictures on the news. I see roads removed and gone away that, that certainly looked like they would be there for a very long time. In the middle of uncertainty, I want to tell you that there are certainties. We will die. I want you to know that we will stand before God. In the middle of uncertainties, it is certain we will stand there. And it is certain that Christ gave His life yeah. for us. But the fourth certainty is this. Is that He is coming again. The Bible says, And they looked for Him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You see, He came as a helpless baby the first time. But the next time He comes back, He is not going to come as a lamb, as a sacrifice. But He's going to come back as the lion. He doesn't need those twin towers that went down ten years ago to set up His kingdom. He doesn't need the United Nations to set up His kingdom. But He is going to set up His kingdom with certainty. And for certainty, for all those who love Him and look forward to His appearing, He's coming the second time for us. Amen. He's going to take us out of here. Listen, I'm not looking for another earthquake. I'm not looking for a flood. I'm not even concerned about a terrorist attack. All those are uncertain. But there is one thing that is certain that I'm looking for. That if I don't die yet, and it is certain that I will die, but, but, but it is possible that He will come back before I die. I'm looking forward to Him coming back. Amen. I'm looking forward to His soon return. Amen. I know some people, they may doubt it. There are others that may dread it. But I'm telling you, I'm not doubting it. I'm not dreading it. But I am depending on it this morning. Amen. With certainty, He is coming back for a people who's asked Him to come into their heart and wash away their sins. Who know them as their Savior. Oh, yes, I know that homes have been destroyed. It's a great heartbreak. There's even been lives that have been taken this week. And there has been eagles that have been swept away. Amen. But with certainty this morning. Amen. I know that He's coming back. I can't depend on my vehicle. I can't depend on any other relationship. I can't depend on my job or money. I depend on Him. Yeah. Amen. Because with certainty, He will come back. He's going to appear as as a bridegroom as he comes to get his bride. He's coming back. There's a story told in Texas of a rope that was hanging outside a gas station. And it said weather predictor over top of it. Traveling by, I was curious how does this weather predictor work? He asked the gas station attendant. He said, You see, it works this way. It is a guaranteed weather predictor. If that road is not hanging straight down, if it's up in the air, it's windy. And if you touch that rope and it is wet, it is raining outside. And if you touch that rope and it is stiff, there is ice. He said, it is the most accurate weather predictor, even better than the weatherman. I'm telling you, there is something that is accurate this morning that is a prediction that's guaranteed more than that road flying in the wind. It is the Word of God. And Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back. In the middle of all life's uncertainties, we can be certain He's coming back. The story is told of a Methodist preacher, true story, who went to a funeral that was much different than anything he was used to. 
He was used to going to the big mega church that he was accustomed to. And so he went to the funeral of a relative in his church that, that lived out in the country. As he went out in the country and he heard the funeral, he said there like Joe. Joe was in the open casket. There were many that looked upon him. The preacher said several things. He said uh, several things from the pulpit as he looked over the casket. He said it's too late for Joe. He said, Joe may have had uh, uh, wanted to spend more time with his family. Joe maybe wanted to, 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 to do more things, but now he can't. He's dead. It's too late for Joe, but it's not too late for you. There is still time for you to decide. You're alive, but it's not too late for you. Today is your day of decision. Joe may have wanted to change things, but Joe can't. But you can. Pretty sure it was just taken back door the funeral. Door in the middle of the funeral procession, a gray helm bus got in the middle of the funeral procession, and the preacher started saying, Listen, Joe's dead, but you're not. You can make a difference for eternity. You can make it right for eternity. You can make your life fulfilling. He said they got by the graveside before they lowered Joe down in, and the preacher reminded them that once again Joe's decisions were all over, but our decisions was there, and there was opportunity for each one of us. And that Methodist preacher got in his vehicle there with his wife and, and he was beginning to talk to her. He said, honey, he said, I just can't believe how things went today. I'm so angry at that preacher. He said, I can't believe. I, I, have you ever seen anything more manipulative? Have you seen anything more sensitive, sensitive to that poor family? I found it to be disgusting. His wife said, I, I found it to be disgusting too. I found it to be insensitive too. She said, but worse of all, I found it to be true. See, once we die, our decisions are made. It's all said and done. There's not another word to be breathed. There's never another hope to hold on to. It's done. I'm telling you we're living in a world of uncertainties. There is nothing certain but these four things. It is appointed that a man wants to die. It is certain that after that there will be judgment. But it is certain that Jesus came and gave us life. And took upon him judgment that we won't have to experience. And the fourth thing is this is that he is coming again. He is with certainty. We went to go somewhere on Friday, there was no way to go in the direction. It's very uncertain. We didn't realize that. So uncertain. But I want to tell you that this morning I've done my best with the help of the Holy Ghost. Now He's going to take over to pave a way for you where there is a road of certainty. And they say, but ago, my life is filled with uncertainty. I just don't know what's up and what's down. If I'm coming or if I'm going. I want to tell you that it's certain that God wants to take care of you. It doesn't matter about anything else in life, bottom line, but that you know for certain that you're right with God. Because one thing is for sure. God's word is certain. And if you don't know Him, after death, you will die and be judged and go to hell. I am not a hard preacher. I don't like to have conflict. I don't like to be at odds with anyone. But that's not what I say. That's what God's Word says. I don't want to upset your rocker, but I need to tell the truth. That in the middle of uncertainty, 9-11, hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, tropical storms, flooding, uncertainty, jobs and relationships, so uncertain that we can be certain 
that God's will is true. I wonder if you'll just simply bow your head this morning as the Spirit of God begins to move. I'm not here to embarrass anyone. If you'll bow your head and close your eyes, no one looking around, I want you to give opportunity to yourself this morning. Maybe you feel that uncertainty in your home, in your job. As you look at community around about you, you feel that uncertainty. As you look at media, as you look at national events, as you look at worldwide events, there's such uncertainty. But God wants to give you certainty in the midst of uncertainty. Maybe you say, Brother Seville, I'm not saved. Pastor, I don't know Him as my Savior, but I need to know Him that with certainty, I don't know that I'll make Kevin my home. With no one looking around, I wonder if you would just slip up your hand and say, Pastor, this morning I want to know Him with certainty. Would there be someone this morning? Amen, I'm not going to tear you real long, but I want to give you that opportunity. I want to know Him with certainty. Is there someone this morning? Amen. God sees that hand. Maybe there's another hand. Someone else this morning, you say, I want to know Him with certainty. Because I know that in an uncertain world, death is certain. And the Word of God tells me judgment is certain. But God's promise of giving His Son is certain. And if I let Him come into my heart and my life, I can be free from sin. That I can be with Him through all eternity. That's for certain. This morning, this is what I want to do. I want each one of us to gather in around that altar. And I want us to make for sure, for certain, that we're right with God. Would you come in? Would you this morning? And then we don't need piano music. We don't need anything fancy. All we need is for hearts to be healed and say, I'll come in. I want to know Him with certainty. Would you come this morning? Would you gather in? Everyone this morning, I want to know Him with certainty. I want to know Him with certainty. Hallelujah. I want to know Him with certainty this morning. Amen. That's right. Let's gather in around these altars.